Welcome back everybody. In today's video, this is an iPhone 14 Pro Max and this is an iPhone 14 Pro Max as well. But one of these devices is a fake iPhone 14 Pro Max. So let's start and let's unbox these two devices. So boys and girls, here we have an iPhone 14 Pro Max and a fake iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is which? Well, if you would be here where I am, you could see immediately from this box that this is the fake version. And I'll tell you why. If I bring this box close to you, you can see how the printing is super nice and the colors basically fade from one to another. If I show you this other one, well, actually you can see it pretty good over here. This is the fake box. It is very fake from the beginning. If I turn it to the side, you can see that the fake wants to be so original that the iPhone text is a lot more purple with the purple iPhone on this side too and with the logo too. They're like, oh no, this is the new iPhone. We're super purple. We're very, very purple. On the back, well, there's one interesting information on the fake one. They basically copied everything else. But they have this over here, mobile e-phone e 14 Pro Max purple. That is basically this phone. Over here it says 14 Pro Max, 512 gigabytes, which it's not, or we'll get to that in a moment. Now, whenever you're opening an Apple product, the unboxing experience is very, very important. And when you're taking off the box, Apple has calculated the perfect amount of time for you to take off the box. They have designed the box for it to take a long time. But if I take off the box, as you can see, this comes off very, very soon. And this comes off just as it should do. Now, this box over here has like this air gap between the top of the, the lid of the box and this protector thing. And this is where the iPhone's camera goes. And this is basically just two pieces of paper. And here are the phones. Now, we'll get to the phones in just one moment. Let me show you the unboxing experience. Here, you can just pull this tab and take out the phone very comfortably. Here, there's nothing. So you need to somehow get the phone out. And, you know, it's like this. And the moment you take it out, you, you don't have any screen protector or anything on here. This is just the phone bare bones as is. On this phone, you have the wide screen protector that comes with it. Now, in the box, you have the USB-C cable, but this is so fake. It's a very weird cable, but it's packaged like an original, kind of looks like one, but probably is fake as hell. In here, you have the paperwork, SIM card ejector tool, and one piece of paper. That's it. They copied the design by Apple in California and nothing else. If I check the original, in the original, you get the SIM card ejector tool, the paperwork in multiple languages, and obviously an Apple sticker. Okay, so the unboxing is done. And let's see the product. Let's see from the side on how they look close up. As you can see, sorry for the fingerprints, these devices are both fingerprint magnets. The power button is essentially in the same position, but on the fake iPhone, it's a lot darker. On the top, it's very similar. The antenna band is in the same location. On the other side, you have the mute switch, you have the volume buttons, and you have the SIM card slot. Now, in the case of the fake iPhone, you can see that the buttons and the SIM tray is a different color than the chassis itself. In the case of the original, you can see that the colors are perfectly matched. On the bottom, they did a really good job. They basically got it spot on. Both of them come with a lightning connector. Both have the same amount of holes and in the right places. On the back is one of the biggest differences you can see, the camera. They have the color a little bit off. So this in person, it's very hard to show on the camera. This is a lot more purple than this. This is a more gray purple. This is more of a purple purple. And this doesn't really change color depending on the light or depending on where I look from it or, or at it. This one changes color all the time depending on where I look from. And over here, 
If you look at the cameras very closely, you can see something very weird. Now, the camera over here has a wide angle, an ultra wide, and a telephoto. So three different lenses. In this one, as you can see, these two cameras are basically identical. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. And this camera over here is a little bit different. These almost look fake. We'll see. We'll see if even the cameras are fake in this phone or not. Okay, so here we have the two devices. And now one very important thing that you need to look at when you're looking at this phone is when it falls asleep, it turns off. There is no always on display in the fake iPhone. Or is there? What is this? Can I turn it off? Can I not? It's weird because I haven't figured out if that's the always on display or is it just a temporary screensaver and then turns off by itself? Because every time I lock and unlock this phone, it does something totally random, totally different that I don't know what to expect. In this case, it turns off and then puts in like an always on display, but it's on 46%. If I leave it like this in about 10, 15 minutes, it's going to be on 40, 35 and it drains very fast. So I guess this is, and as you can see, it goes, goes to sleep. So it's only momentarily always on. As for the normal iPhone, you can see it's a proper always on display that uh, when you open the phone, you go in. Now, in the case of the fake iPhone, if you touch the phone, it doesn't wake up. If you touch the normal iPhone, it wakes up. If you lift up the phone, it does nothing. If you lift up the original, it wakes up. So there's one big difference between the two. There's no lift to wake function in the fake iPhone. So you need to press the button, swipe up, and then you're in. In terms of security, you just saw that I needed to use Face ID to go into the phone. I can turn on Face ID over here too. Face ID and passcode. I go iPhone unlock. I need to set pass lock and I'm going to do iPhone unlock and now it asks me to set up face ID which I will gladly do as you can see my face is in there it actually recognizes my face but it's okay if it just sees my mouth All right, now my face has been registered. Let's see what happens. If I lock the phone and I wanna unlock it, it asks for the passcode, great. If I wanna unlock with my face, it unlocked with my face. The question is, will it work with another face? Will it work with something else? For this experiment, I have a picture of my face. That's, I'm gonna show the phone over here. Wake it up. And you're in. That's how easy it is to get in this phone. It doesn't really care if it's your face, if it's not your face. Put it over here and it unlocks. Now, let me show you guys that again. So here's my face, here's the phone. super slow. You can see that there's a lock icon. And the moment I show my face, <laughs> it unlocks and you are in the phone. So basically it's just image recognition, face recognition, like it recognizes that there's a face. You don't need the face, you need a face. Now, iPhone 14 Pro Max, is a very cool phone because of the dynamic island. And as you can see, this device has the dynamic island, which is great. Let's test it. Number one test for the dynamic island is with the clock application. If you go in and set the timer and you go out, and as you can see, it starts counting down and shows you the seconds and minutes of how, many, how much time you have left of that timer. 
I'll do the exact same thing. I'll go to the clock, I'll go to timer, and I'll set four minutes. And I exit, and nothing happens. And the only two times I could get the dynamic island to do anything was one, when I mute the phone with the silent switch, and two, when I charge it. I'm gonna present the mute option to you guys. For that, I'm gonna stop the timer over here so I can demonstrate what the real one looks like. So, as you can see, this is the real mute switch. Beautiful little animation, it says it's silent. The bars over there are pushed a little bit to the side, it covers it, and then it disappears. And then you go back to normal, ring, very small little animation, and that's it. Now let's look what the fake iPhone is like. So, as you can see, with my face, it unlocked, great, we're in the phone. Now, they have done the camera alignment just like in the iPhone 14 Pro Max. You got a small camera and the sensor and, or like a dot, pro, dot projector, whatever, and the camera. And in between, it's software, so it's black because of the software. Now I'm gonna mute this phone or actually it's on mute right now. I'm gonna put it back to normal. And this is the animation. It's terrible. They have not put many hours of development into this. This is basically like, oh yeah, it's, it looks kind of like that and we'll use it only for this, nothing for nothing else. So that's the difference. You can't really use the dynamic island for anything else. Music doesn't show up. Timer doesn't show up. None of the live activities, nothing. So it's just basically there when you first look at it for it to make it look like the original. Whoops. Now let's look at some applications. First, we have calendar. Looks kind of the similar, not exactly the same, but similar. Then we have the camera. And in the camera, they have a correct photo, then you have portrait, then you have square, which the normal iPhone doesn't have anymore. And then you have panorama, which is weird because panorama is totally different in the original one. Let's go back to photo. There you go. In photo, as you can see, they have live pictures over here. HDR, wow, you got the timer. It's basically, this is from the iPhone 5S, iPhone 6 era, iOS. The new one looks like this. If I wanna take a picture, you have the 0 0.5, the one, the two, and three times zoom. 0 0.5, one, two, three. Every time I switch on the normal phone, 0 0.5, one, two, three. It's a different lens. Now, if I try to do that with this phone, as you can see, I am on the one time zoom, the normal camera. Then I go 0 0.5, nothing happens. I go one again, I go two, and I go three. Now this is only digital. And the reason I know that this is only digital is these two cameras, they look very, very, very similar, don't they? Let me cover them with my fingers. Both cameras are covered. And let's go again. Zero, five. One, two, three. These cameras are fake. They're just there for decoration. They're totally fake cameras. If I put my finger on this one, as you can see, no matter which option I'm on, the camera is always covered. If I do the same thing, on the iPhone, I'm on 0, 05, I cover a camera, it's covered. I'm on one, I'm on two, it's a different camera I'm covering. On three, it's trying, whenever a camera is covered, it's trying to switch to another camera. That's because it's intelligent. It knows one of its cameras are covered, 
So I'm going to try to use the other one. Now, another important thing, as you can see, you have the widgets over here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You press long over here and you can select your widget, but that's it. No other widgets like on the original one. You have tons of options for widgets on your home screen and your lock screen. A very interesting thing, if I go into the weather, you can see the differences between weather. This is the normal application. This is the fake or more Google-like application, but Google, old Google. And the reason I know that this is an old Google phone is because when I open, for example, podcasts, it opens Google News. When I open TV, it goes to videos. When I open the App Store, which should look like this, it basically brings in Google applications, but you can see the lag. And another thing you can see is how bright the iPhone 14 Pro Max is compared to this phone. This is the maximum brightness on this phone. As you can see, it's on max. This phone wasn't even fully on max. Now it's on max. This you can see, this you can barely see. Now, another reason I know that this is a Google phone is because in the utilities, you have a Google Play Store. Google Play Store is not allowed on the iPhone on any iOS. So if that's here, it means this is a Google phone. And that is the reason why I downloaded an application called CPU X. And from CPU X, we can find out a lot of information. First of all, let's go in here. I don't know where the information is coming from or where they changed the information. It says A16 Bionic. Great. Um, eight cores, etc., etc., etc. But the inter interesting thing is when I go back and I go to memory. And in the memory, it says total RAM is 12 gigabytes. The internal memory is 64. So it's a 64 gigabyte version of the phone. On the box, I don't know if you remember, it says over here 512. So they're faking on how much actually it is. And if I scroll down, the OS, it says 16.0.1, Marshmallow. Do you remember which phone was Marshmallow? It was a Google phone. It was Google version number six, I think, was Marshmallow. That is equivalent to the iPhone 5S, I think, or 6. Correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong. But it sure does seem like it. If we look at the performance of this phone, I downloaded an application called 3D Mark, and I could run a test. The test is the slingshot test. The overall score is 293. This phone cannot run the slingshot test. So I got another phone to do it. And that phone is an iPhone 6. And I did the same test. And the iPhone 6 did a 1,602 score against the 293. That means that this phone is more in line with an iPhone 4S, an old version iPhone 4S. And even this feels a lot faster. The animations, the smoothness of the device, this is a better phone than this, if we're talking performance. But in terms of design, they, they got it pretty close on the original. But what I have not talked about so far that is bugging me to the moon and back, what you can see very good, if I bring this phone back over here, is that if we go into a screen where you can see it's white, the iPhone has equal bezels all around the device. This phone has a huge chin. And this is the number one thing you can realize when you put it in your hand is the size of the chin over here. Now the iPhone can have such a thin bezel around because on the bottom they curve the OLED underneath itself so it can come down as low as possible. While this phone has a big fat chin. So as much as it does look like an iPhone 14 Pro Max on the outside, this is the number one giveaway that it isn't. Now, I could go into more details and show you more applications, 
The difference is if I go into the Files app, it takes me to something totally different. It's like an Android device. And over here, they're faking 512 as well. And you can go into different kind of like file systems and it's totally Android, old Android. If I go into Find My, it opens Google Maps, which is actually very funny. And as you can see, it's super hard to do anything. If I want to change an application on this 120 hertz display, super smooth, super nice. Close the app, close the app, close the app. If I want to bring up that over here, close the app, close the app. It's lagging. It's like, is anything happening? Look at that side by side. If I want to switch to an application, let's say go to the clock. Oh, with the clock, I want to show you something very interesting. If I start a stopwatch and I go out from the application and go back, the stopwatch stops for some reason. Who knows why? Now, let's go into the settings and let's see what it's like to be an Apple user. Over here is where you would normally log into your Apple ID. I can log into anything I want. As you can see, I put steve.icloud.com and I put a password and I go sign in and basically it totally accepts it and now I'm in steve.icloud.com. So I just hacked Steve Jobs' iCloud account. That simple, that easy. You go into general, you go into about, it shows you the name, the iOS version, etc. capacity 512, when we know it's only 64. And this IMA number is an iPhone 13 Pro Max IMA number. I checked. It's super fucking weird. It is uh, uh, an iPhone 13 Pro Max IMIE number or IMEI number. For why, I guess they just wanted to put something, something there or they had an iPhone 13 Pro Max fake version and then they just copied that from there. If you go into Wallet or Apple Pay, you can add a credit card. I would not recommend adding anything to a device like this. I even created a fake Gmail account. That's how I logged into the YouTube and how I logged into everything. Now the phone did come pre-installed with PUBG Mobile, Facebook, WeChat, WhatsApp, TikTok, and YouTube. These applications were there on by themselves. If I wanna go into like an Apple Maps, it takes me to Google. If I wanna go and add a watch, which is very common among iPhone users, you can go start pairing and then either it quits or it quits. See, it, it, it quits. You can't really do anything with it. If you wanna go and browse the web, you can on Safari. And in Safari, as you can see, you can open Google, you can do everything. But this is a Gboard keyboard. So this is an Android keyboard compared to an iOS keyboard. You can see the difference in brightness. I need to take the brightness down over here so you guys can see this display. This is a big difference between the two phones. I am truly amazed on how well they did what they did they basically have an Android Marshmallow phone that they put an iPhone skin over and they put it in an iPhone 14 house that looks very much like an iPhone 14 house. Put two fake cameras in here so they would make you believe that it's a real iPhone 14 Pro Max and they basically printed out a box. It's that simple, there's nothing Apple about this device. So if you are having a device that has a big chin, very slow, I mean, this is a 120 hertz display. This is barely 60 sometimes. It lags, it's just not good. Number one concern, you see Google Play Store, it's not an iPhone. It's a big chin, it's not an iPhone. One of the cameras not working, it's not an iPhone. So, so if you want an iPhone, go official, don't risk it. This is a lot better than this. This is what you need to look out for. If it's fake, you will be able to spot it from now on. So now you know how to spot a fake iPhone. It's relatively easy. You just need to use it for five minutes and you're gonna be able to tell the difference. Anyway, guys, I really wanna know what you think. Are you interested in more 
comparisons like this, hit me down in the comment section below. I very much appreciate if you like this video and subscribe. And until my next video, stay safe and hang loose.